In this video, we're going to talk about some of the challenges and difficulties of learning advanced mathematics. Now, this really applies to any math, but specifically, we're going to talk about some of the things that tend to happen in more advanced math classes. So if you're in an advanced math class now and you're struggling, this might help you. If you're not in a very advanced math class, this is going to give you some foresight and it'll let you know what to possibly expect. I'm going to start by reading an email I received here from a viewer. That's what inspired this video. It's a great email. It's super interesting and there's so much good stuff here. Hi, Math Sorcerer. This semester, I am struggling with real analysis as well as stochastic processes. I am someone who needs a lot of time to learn concepts, and I typically need to do many simple problems in order to understand and move on to more complex ones. This semester, I have a hard time in these classes because the professors spend most of class time proving everything, and we never get to see how definitions and theorems are applied. It feels like nothing is explained, and we are simply spending two hours proving theorems. Specifically in stochastic processes, the proofs are really tough and often require knowledge from courses that are not prerequisites. I am discouraged because then when I get to the problem sheets, the questions are super complex and I don't even know how to do the basics. So I need to hunt on the internet for basic examples for everything and can only complete a problem or two from the sheet. Is this normal? Sometimes I am under the impression it's just me and I should have adapted by now since it's my second year in math. I'm sure you receive many emails, but I hope you will be able to respond. I really appreciate your content and through your channel, I have discovered Jay Cummings book on analysis. It might be a little too late, but it explains concepts wonderfully. I not only appreciate the math content you share, but also all the advice and wisdom you provide. Persia. I have several things to say to this email. This is an incredible email because I have so much to say and it's, it's hopefully it helps a lot of people. So first of all, it is normal. I'm not saying it's good, but it is normal. And so there's a couple things here. So first, let me just say that I have also taken multiple classes on real analysis and I did take a course on stochastic processes. It was actually a graduate level course. It sounds like you're an undergraduate. So the course I took was probably more advanced than the course you are taking. But my experience was different. And I want to emphasize that. I had a, a wonderful teacher for stochastic processes. He did prove everything. We did some great stuff on the board. And the homework was good. I was able to do it because I felt that he provided sufficient examples in class to where when I went home, I was kind of able to figure out the problems on my own. I didn't have to Google the problems. I felt like I was strong enough to be able to do the problems on my own based on the lecture. And that, that was because of him, right? That was because the teacher I had, who's uh, retired now, he's a professor emer emeritus, I think that's how you say it, emeritus or emeritus, uh, he was a legend, right? He was really tall, had his really long arms, and he was a very, very good teacher. He was just brilliant. The way he would explain was just like, I get goosebumps thinking about it. One of those people who, you know, you have as a teacher and you just don't forget. So not every teacher is going to be that good, right? So that's one thing that you have to accept. You know, most teachers are, you know, regular people and they might not be amazing at it. They're just okay at it. And so that's something that, you know, you're just going to have to contend with. And it's unfortunate because in these really, really hard math classes, ideally you want to have the best possible teachers. And you should always try to take the best teachers, but when you, when you don't, uh, sometimes it makes things harder. Now I'm not, I'm not blaming your teachers, right? It's important to prove things on the board and, and I see why they do it, but it's normal for you to get stuck. And it would be better if you had more examples. Since you don't, you find yourself hunting down examples on the internet. And I've also been in that situation. And so, yes, it's normal. It's very, very normal. Math is really hard. And the further you go in math, the more you're going to find this, you know, you, you get a homework set and you've got 10 exercises and upon first glance, maybe there's one or two you think you know how to do maybe three, but the other seven, you're like, I don't really know. That's typically how it works. Okay. I'm thinking back to like 
graduate school, you know, if we had a worksheet with 10 homework problems, I could look at that worksheet and say, okay, I, I can do two or three of these. Oh, I know how to do that. You know, I really knew how to do a few of them. The other ones I'm like, no, but I have an idea. And maybe there was like one or two where I'm like, oh, I don't really know where to start. But usually I had a decent grasp, but certainly not on all of them. So that kind of sounds uh, like where you are. As far as the Cummings book, I'll try to remember to leave a link in the description uh, in case anyone wants to check that out. It's a great book. I have that. It's a book on undergraduate real analysis. Awesome book. And as far as stochastic processes, uh, I have it here. I don't have it within arm's reach, but the book I used for stochastic processes was the book by Ross. And it is an excellent book. It's not perfect, but I think it's the best book for stochastic processes. So I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. The big problem with the Ross book is like, you can't get it cheap. You can't get it for like $10. Like you have to pay more money than that uh, for the Ross book. I don't remember how much I paid. I think it was less than, less than 40 probably. So it's okay. It's okay. You talked about adapting. Uh, I, I don't know if you ever adapt. I think you can adapt in the sense that you're aware of the fact that it's going to be extremely hard and, and it prepares you for it a little bit. When I started college, I did something that was really weird. And I did this at the very beginning. And I think that helped me. I decided that I would teach myself. I decided at the beginning that I, I, I didn't care what my teacher did or how they taught or if they were bad or good. It was up to me. And this was my one shot. And I wasn't going to let anyone take that away from me. I was going to succeed. I made that my number one priority in life. And it sounds like you're making it a priority too. And it sounds like you're doing well. So it's normal Persia, uh, not something to be embarrassed about or ashamed about. I think you have adapted in the sense that you're aware of how hard it is. So next semester when it gets even harder, or maybe it'll be easier because you'll have different teachers, different subjects, uh, things will change. So it's an interesting experience and I think it's good you're going through. I think it's good you emailed me because it's going to happen again. You know, you, you still have two more years. I think you said somewhere this is your second year somewhere. Yeah, second year in math. So you have two more years probably. So you're going to encounter some more hurdles. And then if you go to graduate school, that's a whole nother beast, right? It's a whole nother creature in graduate school. So yes, it's normal. It's part of it. Uh, math is hard. And yeah, so hopefully uh, if someone's watching this video, they know what to expect, right? It, it gets so hard. And, and the hard thing is to, for those of you watching this, you know, Notice I didn't recommend going to tutoring because you can't, right? There really isn't tutoring for real analysis or stochastic processes. It's really hard to find help. And, and certain subjects uh, are harder to find help for. Like when I was taking partial differential equations, I had a really hard time getting help. I used to hang out in the math chat rooms and like, it seemed like nobody knew partial differential equations. Everyone was really good at calculus and real analysis, but like PDEs, forget about it. Probability and stats, forget about it. Stochastic processes, that's going to be a hard one to get help with. But it's good you're trying. It's good you emailed me. And uh, I think you've just uh, seen the reality of high level math. And at the same time, it's beautiful. Unfortunately, there's grades and there's pressure and you have tests and all that stuff. So yeah, you're fine. You're fine. You've adapted. You recognize how hard it is and you're going to squash it and you're going to do good. No issues at all. That's my take. If anyone else has advice on challenging math classes, things that people can do to get through, you know, real analysis, stochastic processes, stuff like that, um, you know, leave a comment in the comment section. It can help. It can help other people. Also, if you want to learn mathematics, I do have courses. I even have an analysis course. It's an advanced calculus course and it has some stuff. It's pretty good. It's on my website, mathsorcer.com or freemathvids.com. And they're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you use my website, uh, you'll get a lower price, I think, because I've lowered the prices to the bare minimum. So you should always get a low price if you use my links. Also, it helps me greatly. So yeah, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. And if you want to subscribe, do that if you want to. If not, that's okay too. If you take away anything from this video, it's that math does get harder. Okay, if you're in algebra, if you're in calculus, if you're in trig and you're struggling, it's normal, but it gets harder. And I don't want to imply that because it gets harder, you're not going to be able to do it. Because, for example, I got a B in pre-calculus, but I got A's in advanced calculus one and two, right? So 
the grade does not always dictate how you're going to do in future courses, right? And a lot of it has to do with the time in your life, your other responsibilities, the teacher. I'm not saying your teachers are bad, you know, if they don't do enough examples. I'm sure there's a reason they're doing it. Different teachers are different and they have their own reasons, but examples are better, right? If you get a teacher who gives you lots of examples, that's always better. Those are the best teachers, right? The ones that do lots of examples. In any case, don't let one failure make you think that you're not going to get better. And don't let me saying that math gets harder, you know, make you feel like you can't do it. If you're in like in basic algebra and you're thinking, oh my God, math gets harder. I'm never going to do it. Not the case, right? I struggled in basic algebra. I struggled with logarithms. I did not understand logarithms. And that's why I got a B in college algebra because I did not understand what a log was. I was just blown away. This logarithm creature was, was just ridiculous. But I got through it and I learned in time and with practice. And so can you. So don't let your current hurdles and the prospect of future math classes being so much harder make you think you can't do it because you would be surprised at what you're able to accomplish with enough time and practice. Until next time, keep doing mathematics.